Greetings, all you phenomenal human beings who are worthy of peace. Sigoli and Eddie with greetings. What is the news in Oneida? Super grateful for each and every one of you. Have loved all of your midterm responses. Wow, you all went above and beyond in your research and your explanations, whether it was a paper, whether it was a video. Really appreciated all your insight. I love the feedback from one another as well, too, in this learning community. Really special. Uh, and just a reminder for any of those previous week's discussions, if you have not submitted yet, those make sure if you missed three, then you will drop a letter grade. If you miss four or more, then you would not be passing the class. I want everyone to pass the class. I want you to do well. So um, just make sure you do those uh, when you get a chance. And let me know if you ever need an extension or you need anything. Just email me. Let me know. I'm on your side. I want you to be successful in this class and in life. And I am honestly moved to tears consistently through our group me as well, too, just with that learning that's happening in there as well, too. So just want to say, yeah, one co gunalunqua means thank you. I love you in Oneida. Invitation, not an obligation, but if you want to, sit up nice and tall, taking the deepest breath of love you've had all day, breathing in some love. Breathe in. And exhale some love. You are love. You are worthy of love. Let's keep it rolling, people. You're doing phenomenal. As we look at our syllabus here, just a reminder for week eight that we're looking now at some videos by Winona LaDuke. I've had the opportunity to meet with Winona LaDuke when they came and visited Cal State Havangna, as we know, the Gabriel Tongva word for the great gathering place and part of the creation story and um, spiritual place for the Gabriel Tongva people. Had met Winona LaDuke there, phenomenal leader, phenomenal human being, has just been a, a world leader. So we'll look at some of the videos from Winona in a moment. Um, you're also going to finish reading this God is Red or this, this last section of it then we're, before we move on to the next book of how it is making sure you're spending that time in nature, making sure you're hopping in the group me, and then also just getting those weekly discussions. So as we pull up the YouTube video here, this is a, a list of the videos where we're at right now. And you can see from what, from Winola Duke, we're gonna be watching these, uh, uh, these first ones and it's outlined as well to do on our, our beach board, which I can pull up in a moment, but um, you're gonna be learning more about Winona's story and uh, hearing Winona speak. So looking forward to having you all learn learn from Winona LaDuke virtually, as I know you all have been doing a phenomenal job uh, learning from our speakers, whether it has been from Chief Warren Lyons or from Vine Deloria, and now uh, learning more about Winona LaDuke. So as we uh, share it right here and look at, um, looking at returning land and Native American uh, peoples, uh, this idea of just uh, Winona's activism, seeds of our ancestors, uh, Winona is very big into pres preservation of our seeds and to like planting and uh, our relationship with nature and relationship with plants. We're talking about redemption, the, the ways of water, uh, talking about a just transition, this new green revolution with hemp, and Winona LaDuke's fight against the Line 3 oil pipeline. If we talked about before about the Dakota Access Pipeline as well too, uh, the music video I recommend called Black Snakes, if you look it up on YouTube and it shows this 2016-2017, uh, activism and this um, protest that was going on there. And this was just one of many. And one that's continuing to go on is uh, happening in what is now uh, we call Northern Minnesota, but still indigenous people's lands here on Turtle Island. Um, and this is the Line 3 oil tar sands pipeline. So you can look uh, here in Winona LaDuke, fight out and uh, speak out against that as well too. So that's where we're at for week eight. For uh, our little final tidbit of information I want to leave you with here, was I want to share with you the preface from the book of Braiding Sweetgrass, which is a, a phenomenal book, one that we're not going to, not, not assigned to us here, but would highly recommend you all check out this book as well too. So um, just going to read, read the beginning here. It says, hold out your hands and let me lay upon them a sheaf of freshly picked sweetgrass, loose and flowing like newly washed hair. Golden green and glossy above, the stems are branded with purple and white where they meet the ground. Hold the bundle up to your nose. Find the fragrance of honey and vanilla over the scent of river water and black earth, and you understand its scientific name. Hirokloi odorata, and I apologize, but it's mispronounced there, meaning the fragrant holy grass. In our language, it is called wingashk, and again, I apologize if I mispronounced there. The sweet smelling hair of mother earth. Breathe it in and you start to remember things you didn't know you'd forgotten. A sheaf of sweet grass bound at the end and divided into thirds. It is ready to braid. In braiding sweetgrass, so that it is smooth, glossy, and worthy of the gift, a certain amount of tension is needed. As any little girl with tight braids will tell you, you have to pull a bit. 
Of course, you can do it yourself by tying one end to a chair or by holding it in your teeth and braiding it backward away from yourself. But the sweetest way is to have someone else hold the end so that you pull gently against each other, all the while leaning in, head to head, chatting and laughing, watching each other's hands, one holding steady while the other shifts the slim bundles over one another, in each, each in its turn. Linked by sweet grass, there is reciprocity between you. Linked by sweet grass, the holder as vital as the braider. The braider becomes finer and thinner as you near the end until you're braiding individual blades of grass, and then you tie it off. Will you hold the end of the bundle while I braid? Hands joined by grass, can we bend our heads together and make it braid to honor the earth? And then I'll hold it for you while you braid too. I could hand you a braid of sweet grass, as thick and shining as the plate that hung down my grandmother's back, but it is not mine to give, nor is yours to take. Wingashk belongs to herself. So I offer in its place a braid of stories meant to heal our relationship with the world. This braid is woven from three strands, indigenous ways of knowing, scientific knowledge, and the story of Anishinaabwe, a uh, scientific trying to bring them together in service to what matters most. It is an intertwining of science, spirit, and story, old stories and new ones that can be medicine for our broken relationship with earth, a pharmacopoeia of healing stories that allow us to imagine a different relationship in which people and land are good medicine for each other. And lastly here it says, uh, in this introduction for this book, Braiding Sweetgrass, a, a section called Planting Sweetgrass. Sweetgrass is best planted not by a seed, but by putting roots directly in the ground. Thus the plant is passed from hand to earth to hand across years and generations. It's a favorite habitat. Its favorite, its favorite habitat is sunny, well-watered meadows. It thrives along disturbed edges. With that being said, people, I'm appreciative of each and every one of you. I don't know what you're going through, but I know that you're worth it. I know you're worthy of love. I know you can do this, um, that whatever you're going through in life, that this too shall pass and that good times are on the horizon and that the, that tension is what help, makes us and help builds us as well too. So I just want to say, thank you. I love you, Oneida. Whoever you are, whatever you believe in, I love you. I respect you. Thank you for sharing. Thanks for putting our minds together. As we say in Oneida, let's put our minds together, so be it in our minds. And as a reminder for Oneida, we talk about having a good heart, a good mind, and a strong fire. And that good heart is having a love for yourself, love for your family, love for your community, love for your world. That good mind is having a generous sense of humor and being at peace. And that strong fire is recognizing that your spiritual flame has the ability to ignite other people's spiritual flames as well, too. So with that, I say... Onugiwa. Until next time on Oneida, I appreciate each and every one of you. Reach out to me if you have any questions. All the best to you.